हेलो एंड वॉम वेलकम टू दिस लेक्चर सीरीज आई डॉक्टर नरेंद्र सिंह गोइंग टू डिलीवर अ लेक्चर ऑन अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक क्रिटिक ऑफ मॉडर्निटी लेक्चर वन दिस लेक्चर इज स्पेशली डिजाइन फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ एम ए यू जी सी नेट एंड यू पी एस सी एस्पिरेंट्स लेट्स बिगिन द टॉपिक एज द नेम सुजेस क्रिटिक ऑफ मॉडर्निटी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल ट्राई टू डिस्कस द क्रिटिसिजम ऑफ द मॉडर्नाइजेशन थियरीज वट आर द डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव टू लुक एट द क्रिटिसिजम ऑफ द मॉडर्न फिनोमिना इन द सोसाइटी ऑल वी नो दैट द होल फाउंडेशन ऑफ मॉडर्नाइजेशन रेस्ट ऑन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ रैशनैलिटी साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी so in this lecture we will try to attack on these two fundamental principles of the modernization first is rationality uh, but the critique of uh, critique of uh, this modernization they emphasize that the irrational behavior of the humans because uh, they say that uh, modern thinkers give too much importance or give lay too much stress on rational behavior of the man they ignore the irrational aspects of the human behavior however they believe that the irrational part of the human behavior is largely influences the personality of the human beings we all know that uh, there is a one thinker whose name is a uh, wilfredo pareto wilfredo pareto in his theory says that there is a two types of action one is a logical action and other is a non logical action so he said that the non logical action carries the major portion of the human behavior and what uh, in our society uh, according to positivist thinkers we need to look into the only the rational side of the human behavior which is observable which is a uh, which can be uh, verified which is observable verified which can be experimented okay which is empirical in nature uh, you know that the positivists believe in the empiricism that the reality which can be empirically proven is the uh, or the reality otherwise there is no reality as such okay there came in his theory further said that uh you we should consider the social facts uh, sh uh, social facts as things okay which is something like uh, which can be uh, experimented which can be observed which can be shown okay so this is how those things which comes under the definition of the science rationality that is considered to be only valid thing okay and the behavior which is only rationally proven scientifically proven that is the only subject matter of the sociologist in its uh, preliminary stage of development of sociology but we all know that in the later stages of the development of sociology uh, like in the postmodernist era in this postmodernist era of sociology we believe that there is no absolute truth there is not a single truth there is not a single narrative this talks about the meta narratives okay so we go into the meta not go into only meta narratives we go into the multiple narratives there is not a single truth there are multiple truths okay and we also look into other sides of the coin which are largely ignored by the earlier or classical sociologists Have many of the critique of the uh, this modernization principles, they believe that the certain things like lust, impulse, instincts, these are the certain things which determines the human behavior, okay, rather than the logical consciousness, because we largely you know what we are. when we we in our family, and if you want to if if you want to know a person's personality. okay what you will do if you meet a person in a office and the in the office that person is you know very gentleman and it's a very politely behaved with you and uh, it appears to be a very modest personality but uh, through that particular interaction you cannot get an exact idea of that what type of personality he or she is until and unless you do not go into the you do not do not peep into his or her personal life 
when you see or interact the same person in family same person in you know routine life then you can get an exact picture what type of person he or she is what actually his or her ideology is what actually he or uh, he believes in largely we know that whenever we know that in a formal setup we all appears to be very secular we all appears to be very you know the cooperative working okay? uh, uh, very sympathetic you know, because it is the demand of the job okay you know? but uh, but in reality when you meet the same person in a different setup you find that a person is very communal in approach that the person is very parochial in thinking per person is very prejudicial in thinking then you get an idea oh this is the real person this is her, his or her real self okay so that self this real self this real personality comes to the fore only in a when he or she is doing a non logical actions okay because that reflects that lust that impulse that instincts that desires that actions speaks a lot okay which were earlier not a part of study of classical sociologies like the uh, uh, romantic above the proponents of the thinkers of irrationality is to rely more on the feeling spontaneity and intuition rather than reason you know there is a very very popular very pioneer sociologist whose name is a uh, uh, max weber max weber is an interactionist thinker who said that uh, our methodology to study the social phenomena should be different from the natural sciences because the subject matter of the sociology is different from the subject matter of the natural sciences because in sociology we studies the human beings and human beings uh, is subject to change his behavior subject to change his moods swings in morning he might be in a good mood but in the uh, in the you know afternoon he might be in a very angry mood in a uh in the evening he might be in a very mood of indifference okay do not want to talk to anyone okay the his mood swings so accordingly his behavior changes you cannot uh, predict the human behavior exactly in all the times i i i i meet you uh, personally uh, you know one uh, in a you know one particular setting okay Uh, at that time when i met you you were uh, in a depression you were in a stress because of you know certain you know uh, unpleasant situation at, at your family okay <laughs> and uh, due to that uh, you know problem and uh, when i met with you uh, you responded me very rudely and uh, uh, but i i should not you know conclude your personality only from that one particular interaction that person he is and he would be the same in all the situation it is not so okay that's why we say that the human personality is a very variable okay you cannot uh, predict the human behavior all the time but when you meet the same person in a different social setting you find that is a person is a very lovely guy okay and uh, then you came to know this is a very different person okay so this is how what we need to understand the this meaning uh, meanings that emotions sentiments okay which are largely which were largely not the part of the study of the classical sociologists okay uh, because they think that it is it will be bring the subjectivity <laughs> but humans subjectivities are also changes na no? even the researcher who is studying the particular subject matter his subjectivity also influences the that particular study so how you can ignore those subjectivities how you can ignore the meanings of those actions so bevers you know that in his study of social action talks about that the study of the meanings is very important to study the society because otherwise you will not get the exact you know exact uh, objective of doing that particular action Or for example if person one person gives you a gift and and a, uh, you were in a, 
child stage that time you easily adopt it and you said this is a very good uncle because he, he is giving me gifts all the time giving me toffees all the time but now you are a grown up and now the same person gives you a toffees and chocolates and you will not impress why only this thing okay you will try to understand you will try to decipher the meaning why that person is giving me a gifts what is her his or her real intentions okay you will go into the level of the intentions there is a one lady who slaps a children and a one person looking at the other end of the road uh, he may get furious that why this lady is uh, you know slapping the guy uh, that particular little baby but when you come to know that lady is a mother of that particular baby and mother is furious because she is very much concerned about the safety of a boy because boy was very careless and he you know they, he always moves here and there uh, without taking care of uh, his health okay may, which may be injurious otherwise so this is how that uh, this is a mother's concern which uh, forced her to slap a boy out of concern but uh, it doesn't mean that the lady is uh, you know carrying evil intentions but on the other side the person who appears to be very wealthy because he is offering you sweets okay uh, you know but uh, it may have at the level of meaning have certain evil intentions so this is how how you can ignore the you know uh, these meanings how you can ignore the person's intentions instincts because largely we are you know the human beings you know sigmund freud what says sigmund freud says that um, our id id sometimes and largely our id super uh, you know overpower the Uh, ego and super ego and we cannot ignore the it it means that part of which is a you know which is very fundamental as a human being as a living being that's a, your desire uh, of hunger your your desire not desire that is a need you need to fulfill the uh, f- uh, appetite okay because you are hungry and uh, to satisfy your thirst okay that's why you take water in the same manner there is your other physical desire action you have an a sexual meeting with a you know person of a different sex okay that is a also a physical uh, meet need this is a id behavior so that id behavior how you can ignore that particular aspect which is a reality okay so this is how he says there is a other things like intuitions you know more of the times we came to know that i you know something is you know i am feeling that something bad is going to take place sometimes it is you know uh, comes to your mind and it happens many times and then you oh my god this this came to true okay how this is intuition but intuition cannot be proved scientifically or rationally okay uh, on the other side there are many other uh, dimensions like frederick nietzsche frederick nietzsche said uh, he rejects the truth of rationality in religion okay because rationality and religion tries to put the person in a structure force the persons to live in a structure structure conditions which are very coercive in nature which are very you know which put a constraints on the individual's personality which he or she may not like to do okay that is something which is you know already you know fixed which which uh, which anyhow in a, in a way which uh, which uh, which demolish the which harms the individual's creativity and innovation you know that a boy uh, when a man as its childhood the that uh, he, the boy is very innovative very creative children are very creative very innovative because they are free they are not constrained by uh, religion they are not constrained by the principles of rationality they are supposed to do whatever yet they want to like because it is their childhood let we say that let's enjoy them their childhood at this stage people are largely very creative and innovative but when we try we expect them to be see them in a particular framework of a society whether it is in the framework of religion whether it is in the framework of rationality then problems creates that somehow harms the individual's creativity and rationality 
Moreover, Nietzsche also said that there is no absolute standard of good and bad, evil. Okay, this is these are all the reflections of the mind. Okay, person in one particular setting uh, doing one type of action may be good, but in the same action in the other settings, prove wrong, because truth is uh, very relative. Truth is very contextual. Truth is not absolute in itself. You know that in the medieval times, there were certain restrictions were put on the women folk, uh, because in the Hindu society, you see there was a parda pratha started at that time, and the justification at that time was that because the Mughal due to the Mughal invasions, due to the foreign invasions, the, they usually you know take away the, the wives of the natives, okay. So, in order to protect their honor, the women were asked to, you know, wheel their, you know, faces under the cover. Okay, uh, this was the that was the, you know, the compulsion of the time, uh, which by the time which became a tradition, which became compulsory action for all the women to cover their head, cover their faces. Now, if you continue with the same tradition, so that that same action. Proved, uh, we see as an evil, social evil. Why? Because now the time has been changed. Okay. So the action which was, you know, very glorified in the medieval times, but the same action in the modern times is, uh, you know, we criticize it, we condemn it. Okay. So this is how the truth is relative. This is truth is contextual. In one setting, it may good, but in other setting, it may prove wrong. Rationality he said to sacrifice the will and instinct. We already have discussed this thing because uh, when we are rational, we are supposed to be rational. So it means that individual will, individual choice has no space in it. Okay. Rationality also destroys cultural creativity. Because uh, every culture, uh, you know, has its own way of life. When you, you know, in a way, when you... Uh, impose a one way of life on a one particular society who are who have no understanding about that particular culture or structure definitely it uh, you know destroys their cultural creativity for example if you apply the development model uh, capitalist development model on in the tribal societies what would it will do it would bring a negative results it will destroy their cultural creativity. It will destroy their, you know, social cultural setup, which we usually glorify. We usually, you know, says that it is a best thing. But in other settings, it may prove wrong. It goes against the basic principles of a particular society. Uh, Nietzsche also said that uh, Christian morality should be abolished because it is only suitable for people who are weak and slaves because Nietzsche is an atheist. He is not a believer of God. So he said that there is a no God. Basically, the concept of religion is, some, is, is uh, formulated by the human beings uh, to bring order in the society, uh, bring stability in the society, to create fear in the mind of the people so that it could regulate their behavior. Uh, so that's why narratives are formulated. If you will do this way, uh, that would be unacceptable and you will go to the hell. Okay. And the hell, there's a, you know, in hell, you know, you have to go through a lot of, you know, punishments, okay, physical punishments, which are unbearable, okay. So this is how narrations are there, that what type of punishment would be given to, to the sinners, okay, who are, uh, who, who do not follow the guidelines given by the society, given by the uh, texts, religious texts, okay, uh, which, uh, the, which are involuble, okay. This is how that uh, uh, Nietzsche said, that that type of morality in the form of religion, scriptures, uh, makes the people slave, makes the people weak. They do not use their mind. Okay. Another, he says that it blocks the implementation of the spontaneity of human instinct. Okay. He says that the God is dead. God is a creation of human itself. There is no higher world. There is no transcendental 
metaphysical truth no morality comes from god or nature because he says that the religion is a structure religion is based on as rational principles okay which the desired goals are there of a, a religion as an institution you know okay uh, marx said uh, if we look at the marxian theory to marx said that the religion is opiate to the masses because it uh, religion always justifies the exploitative behavior of the capitalist class and a religion also justifies the exploitation of the weaker sections of the society at the hand of the you know capitalist or the bourgeois how he says that this is your due to just your past deeds these uh, workers are uh, they are in a, this particular condition they are living in a life of you know very miserable life they are leading just because of their life uh, deeds of their past lives if they will do good deeds in this life in the next life they they na they will get a, a birth in a good family a prosperous family a wealthy family in a capitalist family so this is how in this time in this birth you are supposed to bear all the all the miseries to bear all the pains without complaining okay so this is how he said this uh, science and technology has further widened the gap between rich and poor this science and technology this rationality has you know uh, created inequalities in the societies in economic inequalities which are very glaring in their nature okay so this has not uh, you know bring pleasure to the human society rather it has bring <coughs> miseries to the human society which we are supposing that science and technology will you will further improve our lives will further decrease the inequalities but quite opposite happened okay human creates new values achieving self control eliminates uniformity and regular nature of modernity because it is the human society it is the these are the new scientific principles which are creating a new types of values which are suitable to the capitalist class which are suitable to the certain sections of the society okay so this rationality the science somehow very much you know discriminatory very exploitative if we say that too much uh, exploitation of the natural wealth just because of the enhancement in the scientific and, and technological uh, level okay we see that uh, large scale cutting of the forest okay large scale extraction of the mineral resources why how it could become possible just because of the development at the science and technological field okay this has created a new types of gen- uh, dangers before us okay climatic changes the danger of the pollution the uh, danger of the global warming danger of new dis- pandemic diseases like coronavirus okay so this is how these thinkers you know prove ya yeah, stress that we should go or we should study the irrational behavior of the people there are two thinkers like henry wilson and sigmund freud who through different through their respective theories tries to explain the the importance to understand the irrational behavior of the people for wilson emphasis on intellect sacrificing spiritual encouragement imagination intuition and shrink the soul into the mechanism for wilson all these things whether it is imagination whether it is intuition whether it is the concept of soul whether it is a concept of mind we need to study <coughs> and they say that the uh, you cannot uh, uh, understand these phenomena whether it is a concept of imagination whether it's a concept of intuition merely through the application of uh, rational methods of scientific analysis because everyone dreams everyone dreams we all know everyone dreams and you know? and uh, one night i dreaming that uh, you know i am failed to appear in examination 
and I am running, 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 but I am unable to reach at the examination hall. I was shivering, my body was shivering. But suddenly I woke up and saw, oh, this was a dream. And why? Why this dream came? Because in subconscious mind there is a fear of exams, which appears in one form or other form. And for example, you have a, you know, uh, you want to enjoy sweets, but you don't have a money, okay, to purchase those sweets. You always pass by one sweet shop and look at the sweets and, uh, oh God, I wish I had all the sweets, okay, but I don't have money, okay. You pray to the God. One night you are dreaming that you are in the shop and you are enjoying all the sweets, all the sweets, all the sweets. Suddenly you go, oh, this is a dream. <laughs> because in subconscious mind you had a desire to relish all those sweets, but you don't have resources, so that's why in dreams you are fulfilling. So how you scientifically, you know, explain the philosophy of these dreams, which are variable in nature. Some people are appears to be very gentlemen when you interact with them. <laughs> but you, when you, when you came after a long time, you came to know this person is a very you know rude person. This person, this person is a very you know bad man. Okay, uh, he, he has a different ugly side of the personality which was largely unnoticed by us. Okay, because. By, you know, outer side, the person appears to be gentle, but inner side is a different man. So this is how that inner side cannot be ignored. This is how he said that uh, it stronger regulate human behavior rather than reason. It. It is a stimulus behavior. It is an instinctive behavior which, which controls human behavior largely which impacts human behavior largely. We cannot ignore this thing. You know there is a theory of Sigmund Freud in his theory of, you know, this one, uh, uh, when he says that, uh, talk about the stages uh, uh, at the childhood stage, uh, mother uh, uh, and uh, son relationship and uh, daughter and father relationship. Uh, what he said, these terms I actually forgotten. Oedipus complex and Electra complex. He says that in, a, uh, in the childhood stage, uh, you know, a daughter has more attraction towards father and the boy has more attraction towards mother. Basically, that attraction is a sexual attraction, according to Sigmund Freud. This is a id behavior. That is why, you know, that's, you know, breast sucking for boy is a sort of a gratification of the sexual desire according to Sigmund Freud. But gradually and gradually we trained a human behavior uh, in a way that this is inappropriate behavior. <laughs> this is not supposed to be. And this is how socialization takes place and a person's a super ego. It is transformed into a super ego. Okay. But doesn't mean that the ego is not important to study. Some people are mentally very disturbed because of the mismanagement at the level of this it behavior, at the level of the instincts. So that's why psychology says that we, there are certain things uh, which always revolves in our subconscious, unconscious minds, which need to decipher to get an idea about what type of personality he or she is. Okay because there is a suppressed mind, suppressed by the society. That's why some peoples are very angry, some peoples are very cozy, some peoples are very gentlemen, some peoples are no idea what, when he will get angry and when he will, you know, be in a good mood. So this is how. Highest, uh, he said that human get the highest pleasure of sexual gratification. But in our society, talk about the sexual gratification, it's a sort of a sin. You cannot discuss these things in the public forums. 
sex based education in the indian society or even in the asian societies it's a sort of a big crime. it's a crime it is a abnormal behavior to talk about these things in the public forum however this is the reality because when you go for a marriage you must have an idea you must have an uh, education about because you are stepping in a life where all these things are a part and parcel of your sexual marriage life how if you ignore these things so, so definitely it will create further issues you know which are you know unavoidable so this is a it part of the it behavior <coughs> aggression is a character that is a character of a human behavior if we say man behavior particularly man male male is a very aggressive by nature <laughs> okay and females are uh, you know comparatively less aggressive it is a part of their personality part of their it behavior mother is more caring more loving more affectionate father is known by his authoritarian behavior or the disciplinary behavior okay at least there were times when instinctive elementary human nature rebelled against the restrictions and sometimes when we try to suppress these uh, instinctive behaviors so people rebels against it so which sometimes uncontrollable there are other thinkers uh, who you know talks about modernity in new forms or criticizes the modernity like jeffrey c alexander who is the proponent of the theory of new modernism okay uh, paul gillen devlin gosh they say that through science and technology modernity undermine and threaten humanism and morality okay we already have discussed this thing how morality and how humanism uh, you know is constrained or undermined by the modern mode of production system modernity is not a solution but also a problem for them modernity is not a solution rather creating a new types of problems you know there is a thinker whose name is alric beck he talks about the uh, risk society <laughs> this is a modern behavior this modern is modernism philosophy of modernism uh, has created new types of risk in the societies <laughs> the risk of the nuclear threat which were earlier uh, not present in the societies but now you know in one go whole of the civilization can be vanished from this but beautiful planet modernity has indeed been promising progress for example the effective state power through the concept of nation state supported weaponry welfare for many people freedom security through advanced weaponry to the state monopoly however modernity always envisioned always you know uh, give us a you know very beautiful picture um, that uh, there will be a freedom there will be equality there will be a liberty there would be a you know progress there would be a welfare of the marginalized sections of society but on ground we see quite opposite is also taking place in certain pockets of this particular planet where we see glaring inequalities in the form of poverty absolute poverty is still there in this planet absolute discrimination absolute you know as you see uh, that uh, there are uh, first world nations and there are third world nations and the first world nations are still uh, expropriating the resources of the de uh, developing nations <coughs> new types of imperialism new types of colonialism okay modernity has also a dark side of destruction you know this uh, emergence of nazi holocaust a slaughter of jews in europe okay uh, this uh, modernity is responsible for the killing of jews up to 6 million people were eliminated just on the ground of racial differences one reason holocaust associated with modernity how it could become possible just because of the modernity due to this uh, ad advancement in weaponry system due to its association with nationalism and nation state and a relative nationalism this and relative nationalism is uh, somehow has uh, created uh, 
sections of society who are very much fundamentalist regarding their own ethnicities regarding their own cultures regard they have a very much you know the, the peoples are very much in a modern societies very feels threatened with the presence of the other communities when a, a minority feels unsafe in majority because in a majority a sense of insecurity is there that this um, culture might uh, create a threat to our culture so it is better to wipe out this particular culture no. only then we can survive our, only then our identity can survive this is how insecurities are being created due to this uh, constant contact of the different con uh, communities due to the advancement in communication and technology uh this ex particular holocaust has been explained in detail you know where we hitler you know nazi leader he said in his speech people should not be dealing with pests and parasites one should not raise and cherish them and people should destroy them thoroughly as quickly as possible in this particular paragraph uh hitler <coughs> saying that comparing jews with the pests and parasites you know that pests and parasites are something which are you know supposed to be finished which are supposed to not be, to be there okay because they are a problem creator for the humans <laughs> okay so that's why he compared humans use with the pests and parasites which is supposed to be eliminate he said it is of fundamental duty to eliminate them because they are the pests they are unwanted and unwanted things should be eliminated as soon as possible these are he compares themselves with the plague they compare themselves he compares him themselves with them with the problem of cancer okay which as a result uh, gives birth to international jews conspiracy or this genocide of jews there is a certain narrative which was framed the jews in europe at that time considered to dominate the economy and are able to manipulate the media certain you know narratives are framed against the jews that jews are in a power center jews do dominate the economy <laughs> jews manipulate the media until and unless they are in a power we cannot progress even hitler said that uh, we are uh, because germany was defeated in world war 1 he said that it is a use he he held use responsible for the defeat of germany he said that all the problems uh, you know escalated from the use that's why he says the even the mar he said he professed marriage and sexual relations should be banned between germans and jews it should not be there because jews are racially inferior and the germans of racially superior and there is a no combination of superior and inferior inferiors hinders the majority of jews to hold and it further said it further you know stressed you should be banned to right to vote they impose economic restrictions on them import or uh, uh, ban the entry of the jews into the secondary schools and universities this is how that the discrimination of one community why other community a justifications is being given because they are unwanted they are parasite they are plague they are this and that that's why they uh, we are supposed to eliminate this unwanted race from this planet <laughs> this this jingoism this uh, this concept of overnationalism basically the root cause of this problem <laughs> so this was the whole story in which we have discussed about the side effects of the 
this modern process of development or modernization or this uh, there are certain lacunas in the theories of uh, rationality and uh, uh, scientific uh, you know analysis okay so we will continue with this uh, lecture series because we have to uh, take another two lectures to complete this whole you know topic okay till then goodbye and thanks for the patient listening